the developers for rise of kingdoms just announced the future plans for the game and this might actually be my favorite update that i've ever seen come to the game and they've also confirmed new infantry commanders are coming in december or january and they will probably be super powerful so let's go ahead and jump right into it what's going on guys cheers i literally just woke up and i saw that this was posted on the official twitter account and i went through it quickly on my phone and i was like oh my god God, I need to start recording. So anyway, this is information that was already reported here on this channel. So a couple of days ago, we talked about an in-person event in China that was that took place at the end of October. We talked about how the dev team was there and how they were talking about, you know, a bunch of different things, including the formation system, as well as changing the release cycle four commanders from every three months to every seven months and i just gotta say ladies and gentlemen once again i was right way before they announced this to the uh english public of rise of kingdoms shout out again to ihara for the information originally but what that means is if you guys want up-to-date information before it comes out officially from the developers you should definitely consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a video while you're down there drop a thumbs up anyway let's go over what they have in development for the future of rise of kingdoms this new mechanic called auxiliary commanders sounds really exciting and i really really like this feature i'm very curious how it's going to be implemented but let's go over this very quickly uh, one of the new gameplay features that they're developing is the auxiliary commander mechanic the basic idea is to provide you with more freedom to customize the skills of your favorite commanders this is very good i love the idea of this there are so many commanders in the game right now who have amazing designs or some of their skills are really good others aren't so aren't so good so you don't use the commander in general and that investment is a waste so a way to use commanders that maybe only have one or two really good skills is super super exciting it says the concept is similar to the season of conquest heroic anthem where you can acquire support skills by completing bastion quests like an heroic anthem this mechanic will let you use commander skills you own as auxiliary commanders allowing you to take their passive skills and equip it to another commander we're also considering increasing the number of equipable support skills in heroic anthem from two to three which again i actually love the bastion system in heroic anthem because of the support skills i love to have another tool that i can use that's relatively easy to get and free that i can equip to my commanders and make them more powerful and there's nothing uh, more uh, fulfilling than getting into a fight in heroic anthem and seeing that your enemy gets demolished and noticing that they either don't have support skills or the support skills they picked were horrible because then you feel good about knowing that you made a good strategic decision so more of this in my opinion is good here they give us an example if you take one passive skill from lubu and one passive skill from julius caesar then equip them to artemisia if you then assign artemisia as the primary commander of a troop that troop will benefit from all her skills plus the passive skills from Luwu and Caesar, you could equip up to three additional skills this way. Now, the only problem here is that nobody has Luwu to a sufficient level, but I understand. <laughs> Guys, you got to buff Luwu. You got to give him like a, a museum, but a relic buff or something. And we're going to talk about that. They actually discuss relics in this video. So stay tuned. So what we learned from this is that this is not going to affect your secondary commander, which is just like Bastion skills. And essentially this is just a support skills, but they're bumping it up to three. Now, the other thing that I find interesting about this system is that they said we've designed the gameplay aspects of the mechanic and currently plan to include it in next year's new stories. So it sounds like this is not going to come to the base game, but it will continue to be a KVK exclusive feature. If that's the case, why are they calling it auxiliary commanders? Like, why don't they just, I mean, it sounds to me based on everything that is shown here, that this is identical to the equipable support skills, except for the fact that maybe it's not locked behind a bastion quest. Maybe you just get access to it in certain KVKs. Like you enter the KVK, there's no bastion quest. You just get access to all the skills and you equip it how you see fit. Or maybe it unlocks after a certain chapter in the KVK. I have no idea um, but to me this looks identical to support skills except they've bumped it up from two to three this is still being tested so this could change they're also experimenting with the direction of gve gameplay 
where multiple governors can challenge bosses on the world map now this sounds exactly like call of dragons if you've played that game that's the new upcoming spiritual successor developed by the same developers of rise of kingdoms on the world map they have behemoths and that is sort of like a it's like a raid boss but in the open world and you get a bunch of different buffs if you kill it or if your alliance kills it or whatever seeing that come to rise of kingdoms would be exceptional and this is i, I mean they only talked about this for one sentence in the whole thing but big world events world map events are would be so crucial and so immersive to the game and it's shocking that we don't really have anything like that in rise of kingdoms already yes we have like the uh barbarian camps and keeps and things like that but those are like i don't know i never found them super useful so one large epic fight i think would be super super cool next let's talk about Ark of Osiris because like I stated in my previous video discussing the translation of this information um it is confirmed that they are changing Ark of Osiris now this actually might be pretty polarizing for some people because I know that people who like Ark of Osiris love Ark of Osiris and I think a lot of people have spent a long time developing strategies for this game mode and so changing this game mode might um make a couple of people upset it's kind of like changing the rules to football like the rules just don't really change right and so if you just randomly change them i don't know however this sounds to me as somebody who's always working weekends and can never play ark of osiris really exciting i don't know if this is going to be good i don't know if the community is going to like this so take this with a grain of salt but they're saying that they're adding a new npc element um or i should say they're working on this so we don't know if this is 100 percent coming they're probably still tweaking it and seeing if they can make it um fun and possible but they're adding a new npc enemy to the center of the map similar to the boss in Soroli defeating this enemy will grant the victors combat buffs and points now to me this sounds like a MOBA this sounds like League of Legends this sounds like going and just slaying the dragon in League of Legends and getting a huge gold buff this sounds like you know slaying a Baron right it sounds like getting a massive buff at a key crucial moment and I think that would be super cool I mean can you imagine casting Osiris League and the absolute hype and excitement of somebody stealing the buff from the center boss and completely changing the game i think that would be super cool to see how this actually works and if the game is able to do this right we're also trying to replace the arc with a new type of stronghold to fight over winning a certain number of victories in the battle for the stronghold will summon powerful mercenaries to fight for you among other effects so again this sounds to me like a moba this sounds like getting super minions right this sounds like if you uh, take down the enemy's inhibitors right you take down an inhibitor and then boom you are summoning your super minions to fight for you i think this sounds again really cool but this will absolutely change arc of osiris forever in addition we're considering adding a fog system similar to champions of olympia in order to make visibility slash scouting more important and allow for a wider range of tactics this to me does not sound good i don't know anybody in the game that likes fog um this sounds like especially for a game that only lasts an hour like clearing fog and having limited vi visibility that to me sounds horrible but what do i know future direction of range combat okay we're trying to uh make some major upgrades to the underlying combat framework in order to better incorporate range combat and blocking into the game in the past large battles in rock mostly involved both sides amassing all their troops in one area that's the murder ball and then hitting each other until one side won. this could get very repetitive and tiresome Th this this is this is controversial this is all controversial and let me just finish this before we talk about it we're looking to get away from this style of combat and expand the front line of rock battles likewise in the future we want to provide a more in-depth and historical battlefield experience for example adding in the field fortifications and barricades used in many real life battles to block the enemy's advance slow down their movement and buy time for the defenders to organize themselves in a similar vein walls would serve as a costlier kind of barrier which may necessitate attackers to use siege weapons like mangonels to destroy the walls and force the defenders into a pitched battle so this okay on paper this sounds awesome this sounds sick okay having more in-depth combat i think everyone can agree would be exciting having a use for your siege would be exciting being able to build barricades and have actual real historical warfare would be exciting the problem with this okay a couple of things one this makes things very complicated okay it makes things very complicated yes that implies that there's more strategy but sometimes complications aren't necessarily the best way to go second we already have a ton of lag and server issues in kvk i think that needs to be addressed first 
third the game is kind of showing its age from an engine perspective in my opinion that's just me that's how i feel the game feels a little bit outdated in in terms of the actual game engine and the graphics of of said engine and so making things more complex here feels weird but i think the worst part about this and the thing that i'm most worried about is that people aren't really tired of this system i mean you hey tell me if i'm wrong about this but open field fighting seems to be like the golden gem of rise of kingdoms like open field fighting and battles seems to be the reason people play rise of kingdoms over other city builder games like any time that i play uh infinity kingdom or people talk about lords mobile or land of empires or all these other games a lot of people will say hey these games look beautiful and i love it but there's no open field fighting so i'm 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 all set i'm not gonna play it right and i think that's one thing that i the developers here they need to realize that the combat system as much as it could get tiring and repetitive to people who've been playing for three years it's actually still the best in the genre like which is kind of shocking um of all the mobile games that are city builders rock still has the best combat system so the fact that they're trying to make it more complex and change it like to me if it ain't broke don't fix it you know what i'm saying that's how i see it also the heroic anthem power up added the blockade feature and that was the single most clunky amassing of troops in one area i've ever seen like heroic anthem power up with the blockade feature was literally only amassing troops in one spot because of the blockade feature so it only made this actually worse by including blockades so i don't know how this is going to work do i want uh, more uh, strategy and combat absolutely if they can do this right this will be huge and it will put rise of kingdoms even further in the lead in this genre but again to me the open field combat is best in class so far probably doesn't need to be changed right now but that's just my opinion you can tell me if i'm wrong down below okay let's talk about hero types so we will be making a series of changes to how new commanders are added starting with adjusting events this is huge okay this whole thing is wild so strap in if you guys are are it's gonna be a long video so go get it pause the video go get a drink get a snack okay in the wheel of fortune event in addition to the existing leadership type commanders you'll be able to select new ranged commanders so does this imply that well first of all we're getting ranged commanders right so it's a commander specifically for ranged combat but second of all does this mean that they're going to be on the same wheel and the same mightiest governor as leadership commanders in that case why would we ever pick a leadership commander anyway mightiest governor events will remain the same in that you will still be able to select new leadership commanders those new leadership commanders will always be garrison or rally type as well so that's interesting we have confirmation that a the leadership cycle is not going away b the wheel of fortune is getting ranged but it looks like mightiest governor is not and c new leadership will always be garrison and rally so open field leadership is probably never going to be a thing honda and trajan probably the only open field leadership anyway in addition whenever a new range commander is added they will be accompanied by a ranged combat theme event that will allow you to experience ranged combat for yourself by taking part in these events you'll be able to acquire other ranged commanders we hope you'll enjoy them so this is i mean this is this is shocking right it sounds to me like of course this is an event it'll teach you how to use range combat and some of the strategies i think that's going to be very good and important and effective at getting widespread adoption for this mechanic um other range commanders to me this sounds like you know mark's woman right it sounds to me like if you participate in this event they'll give you a range commander but it's probably not going to be a legendary let's be real okay it's probably just going to be like a tutorial commander right it's going to be like the commander that you get when you start the game and you pick your civilization it's just going to be like that right it's going to be like a just a generic basic range commander blue or green tier maybe i don't know we hope you enjoy them for those of you who like leadership commanders not to worry who likes leadership honestly let's be real we will still be adding new leadership commanders for a long time to come the next one is planned to be released after the seventh gen infantry commander update so right there we know next generation of commanders is infantry stay tuned because they tell us more about this and they're going to be broken mark my words commander release schedule and museum updates over the past year on the china server we released a new generation of commanders every three months some governors have reported to us that this creates too much time pressure to upgrade commanders before a new one comes out this is 100 percent true 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 and real and very true and objectively true as such starting from the sixth gen cavalry commander update we will be extending the interval between new commander generations to around seven months this scheduled commander related events like the mightiest governor wheel of fortune will not change specific to the china server i don't know what what is the, what does this mean does this mean that china is going to get a new commander every seven months but 
we are going to get a commander every three months like why why are they specifying china is also we will continue to update the museum the purpose of the museum system has been to provide more ways for older commanders to take to the field we'll be adding the second generation of commanders to the museum so again this is something that i've already reported on the channel if you missed that that means you're probably not subscribed so go ahead and consider doing that so this is this has stirred up a little bit of controversy okay uh, some of the whales in the game were not happy to discover this information okay because here's the thing new commanders are exciting they just are it's a shiny new toy that you get to play with and if you're rich then you can max all of them as soon as they come out right and i get that that's the case but listen to this this is a this is gonna shock you if you've been playing the game for a long time you're about to be you're about to be spooked okay a majority of people who download rise of kingdoms never hit city hall 25. they don't those people never experience the end game so when we talk about new commanders every three months is a breakneck pace yes it's fun yes it's exciting but even people who are medium spenders cannot reasonably amass a large amount of commanders. Now you might be saying Omniarch, that's not true. I'm a medium spender and I have a ton of commanders. Yes, that's great. But you've been playing since the game came out. A lot of people just started playing the game this year or last year, right? You have to remember that this game is constantly getting new players. So just because you've maxed everything because you've been playing since the end of 2018 doesn't mean that it's fair for everybody else who's been playing uh, it for only a year. Also for free to play players every three months is impossible. Okay. The average free to play player is only going to expertise like two commanders a year. So boom, now we only get two commanders a year. So great news. Now you get to decide which two you want, and you may actually get the opportunity if you play correctly to amass the best commanders. So this is so good. This is so good for the game. Yes, it's going to be less hype. I understand that, but this combined with what they talked about at the very beginning with auxiliary commanders now you have a reason to go back and start to invest in older commanders that you completely forgot about right now there's no reason to max edward just zero there's no reason to get him he's he's garbage he's his usefulness in season two of kvk is so small and it's good for that one kvk and then you never use him again okay so reasons like that um, and also the museum update, right? Now you have reasons to go back and invest in old commanders, right? If you're sitting there saying every three months is, is perfect and seven months is too long. Well, great news. Now you have a ton of commanders that you completely forgot about work on them in the meantime, while we wait for the next game breaking overpowered commanders. Okay. Or just save your sculptures, hit that 1400 mark and just chill there. I, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I think for free to play players, for low spenders and for a majority for a majority of the game, this is very good. And I'm actually surprised, um, but hey, I'm very critical of Rise of Kingdoms. You, you guys know that, that's why Lilith doesn't like me, okay, that's why I'm not sponsored. But this, to me, just sounds good. Until we hear more information, this sounds very good for most players, very happy about that. Okay, let's jump into the Q&A section. When will the seventh gen infantry commanders come out? How powerful will they be? What are your plans for leadership commanders going forward? Okay, this is juicy, boys. This is ju we need some coffee. Infantry commanders were relatively underpowered in the past few generations due to some balancing issues with earlier commanders. This is interesting. Okay, a lot of people are probably going to disagree with this because they're going to look at Guan CPO and be like, what do you mean? Guan CPO is broken OP. And that's, I think Guan CPO is the best open field combo in the game right now. But I think this is true. I think this is true. And yes, you can look at Martel and be like, oh my God, Martel's like the best goal key commander. What are they talking about? But look at like Richard, look at Constantine. Don't forget about that. Like Leonidas he's let's be real guys. Leo Dragothian was right about Leonidas. He's he's booty. Okay. He's booty. We have so many better options now. And I've talked about this in videos before, but tanky commanders like the early infantry commanders just have no use. Richard has no use besides killing barbarians. And so I think in general, this is true. Combining certain powerful commanders with other existing powerful commanders could create unexpected and overpowered combinations. That, that doesn't make any sense with the previous sentence here. We just talked about underpowered and now we're talking about overpowered coming what anyway we plan on releasing the seventh generation of infantry commanders in late december or january of next year at the latest so boom confirmation on infantry one will focus on field battles the other on sieges so what they mean by this probably is rallying okay so we will probably have an open field commander and a rallying commander that's huge their strength will be on par with other seventh gen commanders and will be more than enough for all your infantry needs. So we're talking about 
Joan of Arc Prime. We're talking about Nevsky. We're talking about Boudica. We're talking about there's going to probably be a really good infantry rally that you can do at the very least it's going to be a very powerful open field commander and this is huge right because this implies that it's going to be as strong as cpo as well so having another commander like cpo that is going to be so good for infantry players it's unbelievable so start saving your sculptures right now this at least one of these you're gonna probably need to max if you're an infantry player this is super exciting that they would tell us this now because it gives us time to prepare and they've never done this before by the way they have never come out and straight up said that the next generation of commanders is going to be strong basically that's what they're saying with this set sentence they're saying hey next commanders coming in de december we're going to try and make them as strong as the other ones we've been releasing they've never done that before so i'm almost positive right i'm very confident that these are going to be at least one of them is going to be a must have must max commander let's move on in the early days of rock leadership commanders were high tier so we're talking about pre kvk season one of kvk but as the meta shifted to single type troops the role of leadership commanders became less clear true we will be rethinking the role of leadership commanders most likely in a similar fashion to garrison commanders we will also continue to add new leadership commanders with the next one being added after the seventh gen infantry commander update so to me this sounds like archers you're going to have to wait a while for your new commanders. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That seems to be the case here because we're getting infantry and then we're getting leadership. And then they talked about changing the cycle to every seven months. So I don't know. Listen, if you're an archer player right now, that actually kind of sounds like you're, you're getting, you're getting a little bit gypped here, but Hey, we'll just have to wait and see off season. KVK content is boring. Temi Zilvia and Tempest clashed aren't fun. Uh, can we get more off-season events this is actually huge as as far as everything we've talked about before it's been game changing but this is like this is why people quit right they just get bored of the game and they quit so firstly we're aware of the issues with game modes like champions of olympia the current state of which does not match our intended design we're considering reworking gameplay including changes to the matching system rewards and other aspects in addition to reworking old events we will continue to add new events and activities to get you all through the drought period so stay tuned for those this is huge i actually i'm gonna make another video talking about kvk and why i think kvk is actually um sort of ruining the game and i know that's it'll make sense in the video so stay tuned for that but this is huge this is gonna this is gonna make or break rise of kingdoms i think this is very an underrated uh bullet point that i didn't want to bruise past um matchmaking for kvk is not good with freaking collusion and max fixing between combatants we consider matching kingdoms by victory slash total points also can kingdoms that have just unlocked season of conquest receive newbie protection so this basically says they don't have an answer right now but they are going to try to investigate and address collusion and match fixing in addition for kingdoms that just unlock season conquest we'll be adjusting the matchmaking algorithm to keep them separated from kingdoms that have participated in multiple conquests i think this is all good the fortress stacking tactic oh my god everyone's been there we saw this in our current kvk it's so annoying dude is overpowered will you consider changing it we've discussed uh modifying this mechanic but in the process we found that changing this may be more complicated than we expected as such we can't definitely say that we'll be rolling out this change at a certain time but uh if we make a change we'll let you know so yeah this is huge this does need to change this is big true this is big 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 true having nine fucking forts no no lie nine fucking forts at a pass is obnoxious it there's no skill here it's annoying it is definitely not what the developers intended uh and it just it the, the worst part is like this isn't even a tactic that every kingdom can do they need to be a relatively old kingdom that has a bunch of maxed alliances at least for maximum effectiveness everyone hates this nobody likes this it's annoying i can't wait for them to change it eventually in kvk gameplay non-combat alliances tend to have a worse experience what we do to make them feel involved this doesn't i don't really care about this to be honest with you um if you're in kingdom versus kingdom and you're not fighting like you're in the wrong game mode it's called kingdom versus kingdom what do you mean non-combat alliances what does that mean how are you gonna not fight in a game mode called kingdom versus kingdom versus like if you're not gonna fight then lose like that's that's the pretty much it just don't teleport in like that's anyway uh we've already observed governors organizing their own interesting activities during community events cool we're also developing more story subsystems like the seasonal strategy system plan for the king of the nile story which we hope will uh, so this is actually good this is they're talking about like the um the the new talent system that's coming to the king of the nile story which um will allow them to contribute in ways such as developing their their cities faster or gathering more resources and then you can sort of add resource assistance to the fighting uh alliances so i think 
they've already addressed this i think that's good but in general i don't take this question that seriously because if you're not going to fight in kvk what are you even doing there will there be more game merch like figurines uh they basically said yes we're going to work on it that's good i would love a figurine of like richard or martel or like oh dude cpo prime let's go lilith i'm willing to give you my money like send it to me please there's constantly new kvk content coming out but older events like arc Osiris basically haven't changed since you have all these new game mechanics will you ever add them to older events yes basically yes okay they they've spent a lot of time in this entire update talking about this but yeah um they may uh, consider adding mechanics like capture multiple strongholds to earn buffs to enhance strategic elements in arc of osiris that's huge that's big good uh big changes coming soon sometimes when your city is being attacked by a rallied army even if the power of your garrison far outstrips the power of the rallied army your city takes a ton of damage clearly way more than it should will this be fixed this I don't I'm not that worried about this to be honest with you um basically don't take city rallies unless you are a giga chad mega whale that's basically what I what, how I feel about this like you should not be concerned about the amount of damage your city is taking because you should not be taking damage to your city if you're taking damage to your city you've made multiple errors in a row for a long period of time to get to make you exposed right so this to me doesn't really matter they basically talk about the um city defenders being at a disadvantage based on how normal counterattack damage are uh capped basically um after taking a look at the combat system we found that the core reason for the weakness of garrison is the relative lack of new mixed troop garrison commanders and the obvious difference in power between older and newer commanders basically what they're saying is that because people can min max and power stack on a single troop type so basically they're talking about uh Attila Nevsky right that's coming at your city with a billion stat points because Attila and Nevsky are overpowered not overpowered but they're very powerful cavalry commanders and then they're hitting into you know uh, a Zenobia YSS which Zenobi is an infantry commander but you have like three other troop types in the city besides infantry and so your stats are kind of spread around you don't basically have an Attila Nevsky equivalent for mixed troops so what they're saying is if we just include a mega powerful mixed garrison then that should solve the problem and that's basically what they're going to be doing they're going to be adding new garrison type commanders and equipment so i would be i would love to see like let's say a piece of equipment a weapon that says gives plus 40 percent uh troop attack if garrisoning your own city that would be crazy right that would make the whales super happy because then that means when they take city rallies they'll go be oh y'all they'll be murdering they'll be murdering people i think that would be cool and then as a final note they said during the developer roundtable our governor provided with a ton of helpful suggestions and feedback such as a button to send out seven troops at once new skins don't look good enough not enough community guides promote osiris league more rework leadership commanders and so much more that we can't listen well here we'll be carefully considering all these suggestions we received at the event and some of them will likely be incorporated into the game into the future this is a huge help to the rising games team not only do we get valuable advice great this is good i am happy to see this i love this i'm very like th this whole thing i think was so good this was so good there are a lot of good things here for the complexity of the game the game getting uh, more interesting making it more free to play friendly with fewer commanders needed to max adding new museum commanders making a broken infantry set or at least one commander coming new uh, leadership type commanders that are going to be broken for city defense there was a ton of really good stuff here the fact that they announced all this all at once is huge very good i'm happy to see this um yes dude please more of this uh this makes me happy and excited for the future of the game guys if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton subscribe for more breaking news before it even comes to the uh to the English servers comment down below your thoughts a lot of the stuff here was big and potentially controversial so I'd love to hear your thoughts down below don't be afraid to write a paragraph I typically do read them all and with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace